Welcome to another episode of Lever Analytics hosted by me, Lever KT. I can't believe we're at episode 7 already. Episode 7 is the off-season playbook of the Cleveland Browns. In order to get to the off-season, let's talk about this past season. So Cleveland Browns finished 11 and 5, which is third in the AFC North. They also got the 6th seed in the playoffs and they played pretty damn well in the playoffs and they honestly could have gotten um, the Kansas City Chiefs in the divisional round to make it to the conference championship round. So I think Cleveland Browns are the most balanced team in the NFL as far as being able to run the ball and being able to pass the ball. Week in and week out, it's hard for defenses to plan for the Cleveland Browns. And uh, kudos to Kevin Stefanski. He was definitely deserving of the coach of the year. Shouldn't have gone to anybody else. Um, the fact that they were able to win the game and beat the Pittsburgh Steelers and the facet that they beat them in uh, in the wild card round of the playoffs speaks volumes about their organization. So let's start off in typical fashion. The top five paid Cleveland Browns. Number one, Odell Beckham. He's getting $15.7 million a year. That's interesting. <laughs> So his salary is pretty much fully guaranteed on the third league day, which is uh, 319, 2021. Um, entry is guaranteed now as well. Um, he has an annual workout bonus of 250000 Odell Beckham had a PFF grade of 75.3. He had 23 catches with 319 yards and three touchdowns on the season. The season was cut short due to a torn ACL. So I look at the Cleveland Browns. I see their top uh, paid player is Odell Beckham. And I instantly think they have some decisions to make. Cleveland Browns fans, I want you to answer a question. And y'all can answer this. Um, follow me on YouTube at Lever KT. Um, I know for those of y'all who listen on the various streaming platforms, it's, it's you can't really comment. So go to the YouTube. This will be uploaded to YouTube and answer this question. Did Baker Mayfield... Pl play better without Odell Beckham. I'm saying it again. Did Baker Mayfield play better without Odell Beckham? Did the offense seem more fluid without Odell Beckham? I don't foresee Odell Beckham being on the Cleveland Browns roster next season. As great of a talent he is, I feel like the Cleveland Browns really need help in the secondary, primarily at safety. We have to see if Greedy Williams is going to be the guy opposite of Denzel Ward. Uh, both of them have to get healthy, uh, first and foremost. Um, and also, it'll be nice for Miles Garrett to get some help on the defensive line. So when you think about Odell Beckham, you think about where he's valued that you could probably get some decent picks for him. Especially in this market, we've seen what the Lions got for Matthew Stafford. We've seen what the Minnesota Vikings got for Stephon Diggs last year. Is it worth keeping Odell Beckham at that $15.7 million a year? I don't believe so, especially when your number two top paid Cleveland Brown is Jarvis Landry. Your top two paid players are receivers? Baker Mayfield has to get paid soon. Miles Garrett has to get paid soon. Your top five paid players, $14.7 million for Jarvis Landry, $15.7 million for Odell Beckham. That's almost $30 million in your receivers annually. I don't see them keeping Odell Beckham. I think Jarvis Landry is the heart and soul of that, that, that Cleveland Browns offense from a standpoint of, of motivation. Uh, but $30 million at the wide receiver position with two players and your two top play, paid players are wide receivers. Ah, it don't make sense. But Jarvis Landry had a PFF grade of 84.1. Uh, keep in mind that Jarvis Landry, uh, he actually plays in a slot a lot. He had 72 catches for 840 yards, three touchdowns. Number three top Pay Cleveland Brown is Sheldon Richardson. He's getting thirteen point six million a year. He had a PFF grade of seventy one point one, fifty nine tackles, six sacks, one forced fumble. Sheldon Richardson had a good year. Sheldon Richardson has always been a solid player. He's just I don't know. I don't I don't know if teams don't really see him as a, a scheme fit. Things didn't work out in New York. Things seem to not work out in Seattle. And you would hope that things could work out here in Cleveland. But at that dollar. 
uh, figure, are are there is there organization willing to pay that? Coming in at number four of the top five paid Cleveland Browns players, we have Jack Conklin getting thirteen million a year. He had a PFF grade of eighty four point three. He only had two penalties on the season and also only two sacks allowed. I like Jack Conklin a lot. He's one of the better uh, tackles in our NFL. Um, and in in general, I love the Cleveland Browns offensive line. They are a physical bunch. They're nasty. Um, they have elite tackles who can pass block, and they have guards that can pull and open up running lanes for those running backs. Coming in at number five for the top five paid Cleveland Browns, we have J.C. Treader getting a little bit over 11 mil, million per year annually. He had a PFF grade of 77.1, uh, four penalties on the season, and only one sack allowed. Now, that rounds up the top five paid Cleveland Browns really looking at this the things that stood out to me most uh, were how much they were paying their their receivers not saying that Odell Beckham or Jarvis Landry don't deserve their money because they do deserve that money but what I am saying I think that money can be spent a little bit more wisely so let's look at the tail of the tape for the Cleveland Browns um, this past season they were 14th overall in the NFL 14 teams make it into the playoffs they happen to be the 14th team uh, they were 14th offensively in the head, and they were 21st defensively. Don't let that mislead you. Uh, Cleveland Browns had a lot of injuries um, in the secondary this past season. They was also playing musical chairs at the secondary as well. Uh, as I alluded to earlier, it'll be interesting to see what Denzel Ward, a healthy Denzel Ward, can do all season because I, I do believe he's that elite corner who hasn't reached his potential yet. And then also to see if uh, Greedy Williams can be the guy on the opposite side. So coming up into this offseason, the Cleveland Browns have roughly $29 million in uh, cap space. Uh, they were one of the better teams in the league when it comes to dead cap. They only had a half a million in dead cap, and that's not bad at all. Um, some of the unrestricted free agents coming up this season for the Cleveland Browns, Olivier Vernon, more than likely gone. Kevin Johnson, more than likely gone. They'll probably try to replace him via the draft. Terrence Mitchell, also probably gone carl joseph it'll be interesting to see if they want to keep carl joseph i think it'll probably be better to look at uh either free agency which is dangerous because you know players always get paid above their marketed value and free agency or attack that video draft as well pj goodson uh andrew uh Sandejo, and then malcolm smith are, are, are some of the key unrestricted free agents that they have this upcoming season when i was evaluating the cleveland browns and i was looking at their team needs it's kind of hard to come up with what with, with team needs. And I say that because I feel like they're such a balanced team, especially offensively. Uh, they can run the rock. They can pass the rock. But when you look at it, it's like Miles Garrett is so talented. Um, but the D-line can use a little bit help, a little bit of help. And when I say the D-line, I, I really mean he can use a little bit of help. Um, so I rank their team needs in this order. Uh, safety. I rank safety at number three. I rank defensive line, even though their defensive line is decent, especially because of Miles Garrett at number two. Number one need for the Cleveland Browns, in my opinion, is linebacker. They really need help at linebacker. Uh, from an analytical standpoint, this is an analytical show. Linebackers aren't aren't evaluated the same as a defensive end that can cause havoc or as a cornerback that can attempt to lock up the best receiver on the other side. So a lot of times linebackers get looked over. Um, it's not quite as bad as the, the decline of the running back and how teams uh, don't really value the running back the way that they should. But if I had to say this is what the Cleveland Browns needs. Number three, safety. Number two, uh, they need defensive help, uh, defensive line help. My apologies. Uh, interior and edge. Uh, I seen something interesting though. JJ Watt did get released by the Texans, and he wants to play for a winner. And one of my analysts on Real Ones Productions, uh, Jalen, the journalist, uh, we we pretty much talk every day, every other day uh, about sports. And one of the things we talked about recently was legacy. And I think at some point. Players get to a certain age and they, how would I be remembered? Whether it's in, in, in basketball, uh, Charles Barkley is one of the greatest players of all time, but you don't really hear people bringing his name up a lot because he doesn't have any rings. Same thing with Patrick Ewing, one of the greatest centers of all time. 
can hit that baseline jumper like it's nothing. Doesn't really get mentioned a lot. So you look at a player like J.J. Watt, he's already come out and said <laughs> he wants to play for a winner. He was gushing over Tom Brady. Mentioned Aaron Rodgers. Uh, but I thought it was interesting that uh, some sources say that he wants to play for Cleveland. And I thought about that. And me being a Madden player, the first thing I thought was like, damn, <laughs> I might be using Cleveland on Madden next year. I probably just rush three people <laughs> and play and play coverage with the other eight. Because imagine having to block Miles Garrett on one side, JJ Watt on the other side. It's like feast of famine. Like, who are you double teaming? Who aren't you double teaming? The person who's getting the one-on-one -on -one blocks is going to feel disrespectful and you got to double team one of them. So, I'm not sure if if it if if it's 100% possible, but if there's any way that the Cleveland Browns can get JJ Watt, now it's going to cost them. And you know getting getting a player of that caliber it is it, it, going to cost money and you're going to have to make moves as forementioned earlier when I mentioned Odell Beckham. But that would immediately eliminate a, a team need. I would take defense, defensive line from second to off the list. To, they would no longer need help at the defensive line. And that's something I will be monitoring uh, throughout the offseason. So I wanted to look at um, uh, the Cleveland Browns 2021 uh, draft picks. Their, their draft is kind of interesting because they have some uh, scenarios in which they get the, the, the best pick available, if that makes sense. Um, so the first round they got the 26th pick Second round they got the 59th Third round they got the 89th and the 91st Those are great picks to have Third round, two picks A couple of picks apart Not bad um, In the fourth round It's like they have the brand, They have their pick or the Eagles pick I think they get the better of the pick um, The fifth round they have their pick Or the rounds pick is, is really weird Six pass, six round they have their own, and then in the seventh round they have their pick or the Bills pick. I don't know how all of this worked out. I was researching it. And I'm like, it, it doesn't make sense. So earlier I mentioned that Cleveland Browns got some players to pay. At some point, Baker Mayfield has got to get paid. And I think Baker Mayfield probably out of all of the quarterbacks drafted in the 2018 draft. He was the one that's been the most scrutinized by far. National media has ripped Baker Mayfield to shreds, and I feel like national media owes Baker Mayfield an apology. So, give that man an apology, man. Issue it. He played lights out this season. I also seen something. Browns fans, a loyal fan base, there were some fans saying, oh, we should trade Baker Mayfield for Deshaun Watson. While I believe Deshaun Watson is is better than Baker Mayfield, I have no qualms with saying that. I'm a Buffalo Bills fan. I think Deshaun Watson is better than Charles Allen. Sue me. It's, it's what I believe. If you can get production on a bad team, you are a good quarterback. DeAndre Hopkins for years got production on the Texans. But Baker Mayfield... I think he gets it. I think he finally understands what it's like to be a professional. He had an amazing year this year, this past season. And and, and media, oh, 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 that man, an apology, man. I'm going to clap it up for him. Hey, Baker Mayfield, man. That's a way to shake the haters, brother. Uh, but his marketed value was somewhere around that four years, $140 million, uh, around that $35.2 million a year. It'll be interesting because... I think Baker is going to be watching Josh. Josh is going to be watching Baker. And then uh, the Ravens have kind of got to figure out what they're going to do with Lamar Jackson because I think it's always best to try to play a quarterback a little bit earlier before the market goes up. You know what I mean? So if they can pay him and they can get him at that number uh, where, you know, it's always balloon payments at the end, but you can always restructure. So evaluating this team, uh, uh, the best running game in the National Football League. I know the Ravens had the the official title because of uh, Lamar Jackson's ability to run the ball, but Greg Roman just always finds a way to end up in that top five uh, for being able to run the ball. But Cleveland Browns are just built different. Their offensive line is nasty. 
they open up holes for Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt. And they get busy. And then it's like, it's it's the perfect combination. While I think Nick Chubb is every down back, but but having Kareem Hunt spell him on, on, on even like a second down, not even just third downs, uh, it, it's dangerous. And I like I say, they, they're just built differently. They're able to pass the ball. They, they're able to pass off a of play action, uh, give Baker Mayfield easy reads. And they've had games this year where they just got out to large leagues, and you were in, and, and you look at a at this team, and you're just like, "Yo, Cleveland is for real." I remember getting that moment against the Tennessee Titans, and I was watching that game in the first half. I couldn't believe what I was seeing in Tennessee. Could not believe what I was seeing, and and they did something that a lot of teams aren't able to do. Number twenty two was on the sideline for the better part of that game. And they did it with the Pittsburgh Steelers. They just came out and routed them. Like, they were bad. They It, it looked like Oklahoma Sooners versus FCS whomever. Like, that's how bad those games look. And the Steelers game was in the playoff. In the playoffs. So this team has a lot of potential. Kevin Stefanski is an outstanding coach. Please. I say this to a lot of organizations on most of these episodes. I know the NFL means not for long. Let's say Cleveland has a, has a down year in 2021. I do not expect him to have a down year whatsoever. He shouldn't be on the hot seat. It takes years to build an organization. Years. I feel like that's why the Pittsburgh Steelers, if you look at them from, from a long-term standpoint, have been so successful. They haven't had very many coaches. They had Chuck Noll for 23 years. Bill Cowher for 14 years. Believe it or not, Mike Tomlin has been there for 15 years now. And I know what Browns fans are thinking, hell, why in the hell are we talking about the Steelers? Are we supposed to be talking about the 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 Cleveland Browns? I'm supposed to be the franchise player when we talking about practice. I know that's how y'all feel right now, but I, I had to say that. And not even just to the Cleveland Browns organization, to all 32 teams invest in your coaches give them time now we just had to jump from 12 teams to 14 teams so a little south of five uh 500 not quite like the nba where 50 percent of the teams in the nba go to the playoffs it's difficult to play make it to the playoffs in the nfl extremely difficult and especially to get there and be healthy as good as the brown season was they weren't healthy when they got to the playoffs but believe in coaches. Fans, we're too quick to blame the coach. Media, we're too quick to blame the coach. Stop blaming the damn coach for everything. If it's one of my pet peeves, it's people always blaming the damn coach. And I learned this from Jimmy Johnson. Owners own, managers manage, coaches coach, and players play. The most important part of the equation is the players playing. Albeit if they're healthy, albeit we didn't quite execute, the players have to play. It's organizations. And I feel like a lot of times if the general manager fires a coach, it's because they're fearful for their job. So somebody has to be the scapegoat. Somebody has to be the fall guy. I don't know. I like Kevin Stefanski. I just don't want, if the Cleveland Browns have a down year 2021, a down year 2022, he's gone. Like, they forgot about this season and what he be, and what he was able to accomplish after Odell Beckham got hurt. Kudos to him. So, earlier, I said team needs, and I said it in this order. Linebackers being number one. Defensive line being number two. Safety being number three. I think they fine offensively. If they do decide to get Odell Beckham, I'm I'm curious to see what exactly the market is for Odell, what they get for him, uh, whether it's a player, uh, whether it's picks. Because, um, of course, if they do end up losing Odell, then they'll have to address um, that receiver position. Not immediately, but, you know, either the draft or free agency. So there's a couple of things I've been looking at. Uh, for the Cleveland Browns um, 
if they can get a DMV of the draft, let's say the J.J. Watt scenario doesn't happen, he, he ends up going to play with his brother in Pittsburgh, playing the Green Bell, even playing in Tampa. Uh, and they can definitely get somebody with that 26 pick, like the edge defender uh, for the Miami Hurricanes, Gregory Rousseau. Be perfect opposite of uh, Miles Garrett, and there'll be no excuses for him. Your edge pass rusher, Miles Garrett, is going to get all of your attention. You should see a lot of one-on-ones. Win a few of them. That's all you got to do. Um, if he's not available, maybe Patrick Jones the second from Pittsburgh. If he's not uh, available, Hamaka Rashid from, from Oregon State is definitely a valuable option. So th there are some options there if the the J.J. Watt thing falls through and they're not able to get J.J. Watt. Also, linebacker. If they can find a way, if they can move up and get Nick Bolton, Nick Bolton will be the perfect Mike linebacker for Joe Woods' 4-3 scheme. Additionally, like I feel like Cleveland has options, and there's always the ability to take the best player available when you are an up-and-coming up team. And I believe that uh, Cleveland will definitely push for the division next year. Um, they can also take uh, Hamasa Narzaldine from Florida State. Or Javon Holland. One of those things where you identify three areas of needs, but out of those three areas, you can take the best player available from those three areas. So, let's do a recap of what I think that the Cleveland Browns need to do this offseason. Dress the defensive line, whether it's free agency and JJ Watt or free agency and somebody else. Linebacker. You can also address that in free agency. Get somebody like Matt Milano from the Buffalo Bills. I believe he could play in a 3-4 uh, as an interior linebacker or a 4-3. And he can play an outside linebacker in a 4-3. Great in space. Buffalo Bills lost one game this season with him in the lineup. That's how important uh, Matt Milano was. Or you can uh, get somebody like Nick Bolton in the draft. Also, safety. Hamza Narzuddin. Javon Holland. You have players that you can take. You can also address free, uh, uh, utilize free agency to address your team need at the safety. I expect big things from the Cleveland Browns organization this upcoming season. I believe that the Pittsburgh Steelers got to figure out what they're going to do with Ben Roethlisberger, and we'll talk about that in the offseason playbook for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Um, Baltimore Ravens got to figure out what's going on with this passing game. Or people are going to look at that bill statement and figure out, okay, this is how you, <laughs> this is how you slow down. I, notice I didn't say stop This is how you slow down The Baltimore Ravens So the Cleveland Browns Barring injury Barring that they do everything that they need to do And address the positions of needs that they need In the offseason They should win that division And also Also Compete for the uh, first seed in the, in the conference Which is important because you get that automatic buy To play in a divisional round Alright As I always like to say do something nice for somebody you normally wouldn't do. Always pay it forward. And remember, keep it analytical. Peace.